Welcome to Little Shop of Writers. I'm your hostess, Professor M. M. Anderson. This is the second lesson in my new web series of short, informative writing videos. Learn more about me and my workshops at www.littleshopofwriters.org. Lesson 2. The Comma. Commas are one of the most frequently used punctuation marks, second only to the period. In most instances, commas give readers cause to pause, sort of like a yield sign or yellow traffic light. And like a traffic signal prevents road confusion, commas prevent meaning confusion. Let's begin with the familiar. Most writers know that a comma is inserted after a numeric day. However, many forget to also insert a comma after the numeric year when using the entire date in a sentence. Also use a comma after a single word when it is being used to introduce a sentence. Surely King George was not pleased. Without the comma after surely, the first two word sounds run together. He may have been surely King George, but that's not what you intended to say. In addition, use a comma to separate two adjectives when the adjectives are interchangeable. He proclaimed his harsh, steadfast reply to Parliament. This sentence would make sense if the words harsh and steadfast changed positions. Do not use a comma when the adjectives are not interchangeable. We wouldn't say morale severe, so there is no need for a comma. Commas are the most frequently used punctuation when listing three or more items. Notice there is a comma after oranges and before and bananas. Some say this is an optional comma, but good writers will confirm that it is not optional. It's called the Oxford comma and it is a game changer, or should I say a sentence changer. These sentences have two very different meanings depending on whether or not you use one comma or two. Are you and your friends sitting near the crazies on the train? Or are you and your friends the crazies who others are sitting near on the train? Look at this illustration. Have two rhinoceri and two presidents been invited? Or two rhinoceri named after two presidents been invited? When I point out the Oxford comma errors to my students, they often reply, uh, you know what I mean. And to that I reply, write what you mean to say, write what you mean to say. You get the point. There is another instance where a comma omission can lead to a very different sentence meaning. A dependent clause cannot stand alone in a sentence. It requires an independent clause to make it a complete sentence. Sort of like dependent people seeking out independent people to make them complete. Let's look at these two examples of the same sentence. A comma gives them very different meanings. Most of the time, pause, travelers worry about losing their luggage. Most of the time travelers worry about losing their luggage. Either way, I predict they're destined to arrive without luggage. What about two independent clauses? Glad you asked. Conversely, do not use a comma to connect two independent clauses. You'll end up with a comma splice, although there is an exception to this rule. Sometimes independent clauses require a little comma assistance too when independent clauses are joined by a conjunction, such as and, or, but, etc. Put a comma at the end of the first clause. Incorrect. Dogface is co-independent and he annoys his friends. Correct. Dogface is co-independent, pause, and he annoys his friends. Yes, I know there is no such word as co-independent, but perhaps there should be. Also use commas to set off name, nickname, term of endearment, or title of a person being addressed. Forgetting to place the comma will completely change the meaning of your sentence. I need a stable partner. I need a stable partner. 
Either it will be necessary to console the needy person from the earlier slide, or you'll find a new boarding facility for your horse. Choice is yours. Who knew the comma could be so powerful? Last but not least, use commas to set off expressions that interrupt sentence flow. Expressions like, nevertheless, after all, by the way, on the other hand, however, uh, Taylor, by the way, I am taking your VMA trophy and giving it to Beyonce. That class is a memorable example of an interruption. Well, I think this is a good place to end. There are other comma rules, but if you follow these most common examples, you will, you will be able to write what you mean to say, write what you mean to say. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If so, please subscribe to the Little Shop of Writers channel here on YouTube and come back often for more writing tips. If you're in the South Florida area, you may want to take one of my workshops. If you're not local, there are also online private sessions available. Check them out at www.littleshopofwriters.org. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.